Today on Vintage Camera Digest, we're going back to 1974 to take a look at the Minolta XE. So stick around. Minolta entered the 35mm SLR market way back in 1958 with the SR2. Throughout the 60s, Minolta continued to refine their SLRs, culminating in the SRT series, which were some of the first cameras to offer full aperture through the lens metering. And like most other cameras of this period, they were fully mechanical designs. But in 1973, after almost a decade in development, Minolta released the X1, also known in other parts of the world as the XK or XM. This camera was aimed at professionals and was Minolta's first to have an electronically controlled horizontal travel shutter. This was unusual for that time as other manufacturers like Canon and Nikon were sticking to their mechanically controlled shutters for their pro offerings. But Minolta really seemed to be interested in breaking new ground with their cameras. In 1972, they formed a partnership with Leica where they would share patents and general camera know-how. The first camera to come out of that partnership was the Leica CL rangefinder. But the second camera was this, the Minolta XE. The XE was also known as the XE7 in the US and XE1 in Europe and other places. The XE was the first Minolta to feature an electronically controlled vertical traveling copal square shutter and due to the electronics it was their first non-pro camera to have any kind of auto exposure which in this case was aperture priority. Two years later in 1976 Leica released their successful R3 SLR based heavily on the Minolta XE illustrating just how robust the design the XE actually was. Looking at the camera, the controls are laid out as you would expect. Shutter speed dial, winding lever, shutter release, and a multi-exposure switch are located on the right top shoulder. Shutter speeds available are 4 seconds to 1 1,000th of a second, plus a B and an X setting. And this is also where you'd select auto if you're using the aperture priority exposure mode. The X setting represents the flash sync speed of 1 90th of a second, which by the way is still operable even without a battery. Over on the left we have the film rewind crank, which also doubles as the back latch. Film speed is set on the ring surrounding the crank as well as the exposure compensation dial. The film speed can be set anywhere between ASA 12 and 3200. Exposure compensation can be set plus or minus two stops. Also over on the left side near the rewind crank is the battery check switch. Rotating it down will cause a red LED to illuminate if the battery power is good. On the back of the camera to the right of the viewfinder window is the on off switch and a film counter window. Also a part of that window is a safe load signal that lets you know if the film is loaded and advancing correctly. To the left of the viewfinder window is a small switch for the viewfinder blind. On the hinged back you'll find the film reminder where you can tear off and insert the end of the box your film came in to remind you of what's in the camera. On the front of the camera below the shutter release is the self timer lever and below that on the lens mount is the depth of field preview and stop down lever which operates a bit strangely on the XE. Pushing the switch in disengages the aperture linkage and allows full aperture viewing. It's in the out position that you'll see a depth of field preview. Over on the left side of the lens mount, you'll have the lens release button at the top. Below it, you'll find the PC terminal and a switch to change between X or FP sync. The bottom of the camera is rather sparse, having only the rewind button, tripod socket, and battery compartment. You'll notice that there are no accommodations for the addition of a motor winder. Just like the SRT series before, you can't attach a winder. Even without a winder, this camera is still a great shooter for just about anything. It's rugged and well built and feels good in the hand. The shutter is quiet and the winder is nice and smooth. The metering system is Minolta's CLC system, which uses more than one metering cell in the prism that covers different areas of the frame, which proves itself to be quite accurate and able to handle backlit scenes well. And the XE sports a full information viewfinder. You'll see the meter shutter speed scale at the right, and at the top, 
you'll see the set f-stop as well as the set shutter speed. Today we take all that viewfinder information for granted, but back in the early 70s there were loads of cameras that just didn't have it. Or maybe they showed the shutter speed and not the f-stop, or vice versa. Anyway, it's good to have both visible in the finder. So today I'm going to head out to a car show at the local high school with a few rolls of T-Max 100. I always like how shiny paint and chrome gets represented in black and white. The only downside to this is that the temperature is in the 90s, so hopefully I won't pass out. But hey, if I do, well, it'll make for some dramatic footage and I can title the video Vintage Camera Photographer Collapses at Outdoor Car Show. That ought to bring in a few extra clicks. So I'm in Mount Zion, Georgia. We have a car show and a sort of an arts festival going on here this morning. I've got the XE7 out here with a few rolls of T-Max 100. Gonna get some nice detail shots of some cars and some nice paint and chrome, hopefully. And we'll just see what else we get. So. All right, I'm gonna shoot a manual first for a little bit. Got F8 at 125th of a second. Right now I'm shooting at F8. On bracket, of course. Now let's also work on some depth of field here. So I'm shooting at one one thousandth of a second. That's gonna give me about 2.8 maybe. I mean, you can't beat these old cars for style and character. You're never going to see cars from the 80s or 90s in car shows in 50 years. They just don't have it. We're at F5.6. All right, I'm going to go to... I'm going to shoot with as shallow depth of field as I can. I've got in 100 speed film, so... So at 2.8, I'm reading like 1,000th of a second. So let's go to F2. Man. Probably moving out of frame here, but try to get some symmetry. Let's see. It's a good looking shot from the back as well. Fiftieth of the second at F four. Let's do five hundredth of a second at two point eight. One thing I always have to remember about these old cameras is that I have to actually wind the film. I'm wondering if I should change lenses. I got the 51.4 on, but.
You may swap it out with a 28 millimeter. I like the angle of this 28 here for this. Get a couple of these. Yeah, so it's a nice car. Nice little truck there. A friend of mine once asked me what my fascination was with headlights when it comes to shooting these cars. I was like, well, that's usually one of the most interesting areas, the corners of the vehicle, where all the design comes together, you know, you get details. A lot of stuff. change film, switch over to aperture priority. I think I'll put the 135 2.5 on. Because you know I can't be satisfied with just sticking with a lens. All right, it is brutal hot out here. I'll do this one more roll and then I'm gonna call it where I die of heat stroke. All right, so I've got the Vivitar Series 1, 135, 2.5. I have not shot much with it, but I'm about to. I said this was a 2.5 lens, I'm wrong. This is a 2.3. One thing about this particular lens is it's not really made for cameras that have the little periscope window in the viewfinder because I can't see what aperture I'm setting it to. I can see the shutter speed, of course, but I cannot see aperture. I was getting some detail here of this corner. So I'm underexposing on purpose because we got a lot of black here. I do like this angle.
and stay away from the chrome. Got a few left. Just a few. So we're going to head back to the house, process these, and we'll look at them and see what we got. See you there. So there you go. This wasn't my first time shooting with this camera, but it's been long enough for me to forget how effortless it is. It performed great in auto exposure mode as well as metered manual. The viewfinder is nice and bright, and I love being able to see the f-stop and the shutter speed there. This is a fine camera and a pleasure to use. I also want to bring attention to the MC Roker X. 50 millimeter 1.4. This lens is absolutely fantastic. And pairing it with a low grain, sharp black and white film such as T-Max 100 is a recipe for amazing images. I've always said T-Max 100 is my all time favorite film and that gets validated every time I shoot it. Anyway, thanks for tuning in to this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. If so, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. I've got lots of great stuff planned. Also, be sure to leave a comment. I'd love to hear your thoughts on the XC7, Minolta, or anything on film photography. So until next time, load up that camera and get out there. And thanks for what you're doing to keep film alive. See ya.